For me, it was 24 years ago I was working with you on The Simpsons. I can't really believe that. I know, and that's when I got the phone call during a Simpsons record, and they, I got on the phone and a voice literally said, you're the new host of Late Night, get going, kid. And, uh, <laughs> so it was an old 1940s guy who yeah, told you that. Yeah, I had one of those candle <laughs> farms. <laughs> this is Wrigley 525. <laughs> But, but uh, yeah, that far. exactly. But I remember thinking, oh, The Simpsons has been on four years. This thing's pretty much done. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. Good luck, suckers, without me. <laughs> uh, you know what's funny, though, is that you've, you're, uh, I tell this to people all the time. They ask me what it was like to work, uh, work there. And I said, These, the, the people that do the voices, the actors that provide the voices, provide so much of the soul of that show. The, you know, the writing is uh, obviously good, but you guys really inhabit so many amazing characters. And... I know that doing voices, like even watching your new show, Brockmire, I can tell that this is a character that you probably attacked almost through the voice first, trying to figure out what he sounded like. He's a baseball announcer and thinking, that's how you work. Oh yeah, whenever I often do vocally driven characters, have throughout my career, and, mm -hmm. and this baseball announcer voice, the voice of Jim Brockmire, uh, is a voice that I keyed into as a teenager, the generic baseball announcer voice of the 70s, I call it. Mm. Also the voice that sold you the Ginsu knife and, uh, <laughs> and uh, Popeil's Kitchen Magician, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, I remember that. Um, uh, yeah, I was fascinated. Like, do these guys always sound this way? It became the comedic premise, one of the first ones. That... Did you, what, you, when you, so you were a kid doing voices. Anyone who's good at voices, uh, that's not my talent, but uh, we're still looking for that. But, uh, <laughs> but, when I, but, but I know that anyone I talked to who's very good at voices was doing it when they were kids. Were, were there people that you mimicked as a child, you know? Oh, everyone. Just, uh, in, in the house that you were, or relatives? Yes, I imitated everyone I heard, relatives. Uh, the, some came in handy. Uh, my, gra my paternal grandmother, I did a very dead-on impression of my, no, my paternal, my father's mother. Right and uh, who my mother didn't always get along with. Mm -hmm. So I would freak out my mom occasionally if she would come home. <laughs> I'd be in the kitchen, hi, honey. I'd be like, hello, honey, how are you, honey? <laughs> and my mother would uh, go, I could hear a little pause of what I knew was being filled with intense fear and hatred on her part. Yeah. And then, hi, mom. I was like, just me, Mom, sorry. <laughs> how, uh, how angry was she when she found out that it was you again? It was a combination of tremendously relieved that, yeah. uh, yeah, that my, my dad's mom wasn't actually there and then very annoyed at me. Yes. Yeah. I got a lot of that, a lot of dismissive, you know, we're just, all going to talk in our own voices at the table tonight. Right. Which was directed at me. Right. Yeah. You're never going to earn your living that way, so knock it off. Yeah. <laughs> yes.